spend with Jesus. Sweet is the presence of the Lord, and sweet is the way He gently takes me by the hand and helps me down the road that leads to home. Hey, welcome everybody to Pastor Speaks. My name is uh, Pastor James Bridges. I'm the pastor of Living Way Christian Fellowship in Hannibal. If you're in Hannibal, we'd love to see you, uh, love to minister, love just to, to fellowship with you sometimes. So just come on down and see us. But uh, one of the things I, I also do in Hannibal is I, I work with addictions. I mean, I've been working with addicts and, uh, and uh, reentry and those that are coming out of prisons and jails. And um, the things I've seen in people's lives, the thing I've seen in my own life, is, you know, before knowing Christ, I, I truly, truly messed up my life. You know, Christ uh, saved me from my sins. He, he, he delivered me from the pit that I found myself in. And, and, I, and I get to minister to other men and women who find themselves in that same pit. You know, lives are being messed up daily due to the sins, due to uh, uh, all the things that this world wants to call good. But I'm telling you, I'm telling you, God wants to come and reverse the curse in our life. He wants to reverse those things and, and change us and make us brand new. You know, one of the things I, I tell my church group all the time, my, my congregation, is God is not interested in making your old life better. He's not interested in taking your old life and making it better. He wants to give us a brand new one. He wants to give us a completely new life, a new creature, a new creation. And how wonderful is that to know that God is working, that God is doing, that God is reversing the curse in our life. See, overnight, God can turn that thing around that you're uh, having in your heart. God can turn that thing around. If it be it alcoholism, drug addiction, pornography, immorality. Maybe it's financial. Maybe it's mental health and depression. But I'm telling you this more, uh, right now that God can turn those things around and make you a brand new creature, a brand new creation in life. See, King David, David went from a nobody, an unknown, to the back side, uh, on the back side of nowhere, doing a job nobody wanted to do, to a somebody who was known all over Israel as the one, uh, the shepherd boy, who put a rock in the sling and, and fell the giant. Joseph went from a pit to the palace, from a prison to a prince overnight. Saul went from chasing his father's donkey to the king overnight. Overnight. That tells me that while we are sleeping, that tells me that while we were napping, while we were resting, while we were looking the other way, God is still working. That Jesus is still on the throne. While we were sleeping, God was keeping somebody up talking to them uh, about him through the Spirit of God. And while we were sleeping, God was working. He was changing. He was uh, magnifying his glory on this community. And it's time for us to learn and to accept the blessings. To quit looking for the, the pretty. I think sometimes we look for the outside pretty. When God is focused on the inside, when he's trying to change the heart. In our scriptures... In 2 Kings chapter 2, verses 19 through 22, it says, Then the men of the city said to Elijah, Please notice the situation of the city is pleasant, as my Lord sees. But the water is bad, and the ground is barren. And he said, Bring me a new bowl, and put salt in it. So they brought it to him. And then he went to the source of the water and cast in the salt there and said, Thus said the Lord, I have healed this water. From it there shall be no more death or barrenness. So the water remained healed to this day, according to the word of Elisha, which he spoke. Now in this text, the men of the city came to Elijah the prophet and said, We have a problem here. 
We have a problem going on. You can look around and you can see the pretty. You can look around and you can see all the nice buildings. You can look around and see all the, the handsome and beautiful people. But the ground is barren and the water is bad. From the outside, everything looks pretty. But we have a problem. And I'm going to tell you right now, community, right now, church, we have a problem. We have a problem going on in our homes. We have a problem going on in our cities. We have a problem going on in our nations. But most of all, we have a problem going on in our own hearts. You know, everybody's talking about revival and how we need to have a revival. But I'm going to tell you, the true revival starts with the Spirit of God changing the heart of a man or woman. We have a problem. We have those things in our life that we need deliverance from. How long are we going to keep going around the same mountain, fighting the same battles, struggling with the same addictions, wrestling with the same fleshly lusts and desires, falling down at the same place over and over again, giving in to the same temptations over, over, and over again? before we are willing to admit that we have a problem? How long are we going to put up with attitudes, addictions, hang-ups, and lust of the flesh that are self-destructive and an absolute, be in absolute agreement with the Word of God before we holler, Help, Lord, I have a problem. The only problem that is unsolvable the only problem that is unfixable and incurable is the one that no one admits to having. If we're going to keep these sins secret in our life, if we're going to keep these problems hidden in our life, and if we're going to try to cover them up with the pretty, how are we ever going to change? How are we ever going to find true repentance from the Word of God if we're just going to cover up all the things that we have a problem with? How are we going to, if we're going to cover up the bitter water and the barren lands and just look at all the pretty in this world? We have a problem. So the first major step to a turnaround and a breakthrough is to do the same thing these men did. They recognized and admitted they had a problem. So we need to admit there's a problem and taking it to the right place. We need to stop hiding things in our life. And I'm telling you, everybody who's listening right now, if you have alcoholism going on and you're trying to keep it secret, you're trying to keep it together, it's time that you admit to someone that you have alcoholism. If you have drug abuse, pornography, pornography is hidden throughout our churches. It's hidden throughout our men. It's hidden throughout our community. And it's time for somebody to come forward, put aside all that shilt, uh, on, that, on that guilt and shame that the enemy wants to give to us and admit that we have an issue, that we have a problem. And not only admit it, do we have a problem, but we need to admit it and take it to the right place. See, there's a lot of great resources for help. We have a, a, a wide variety of things that are there to help. We have treatment centers. They're there to help. We have 12-step uh, meetings. They are there to help. We have other people in this world that are there to help. And those are good things. But the best thing is taking it to the throne of God, taking it to the foot of the cross, taking it to the altar, taking it to our pastors, taking it to our church family, and say that I have a problem and I need help. That's the first real prayer when I got saved. I got arrested again. I remember that day. I got arrested again and I just couldn't keep going on like it. I couldn't keep going back and forth to jail. I couldn't just keep living like that anymore. And I just had to say, help me, God. If you're real, help me because I can't do this anymore. And it's time for the church to admit and to say we have a problem instead of trying to hide it instead of trying to sweep it under the rug. We need to get to the root of the problem. And the root's the sin and the curse that we have. From the very beginning, when uh, sin entered into the world, the curse came with it. And we've been living under the curse, under the fall of man, since the, the day they were exited from the garden. And it's time that we admit 
that I am a sinner and I need help. I may be pretty on the outside. I may dress nice. I may look good. But I'm telling you, we have a problem. And the only thing that can change that problem, the only thing that can reverse that curse is the power of God. We need Jesus back in our homes, back in our schools, back in our government. We need Jesus back in our churches. It seems to me that the churches around our country are so apt at keeping the sinner and lacking in the will to change them and give them the Word of God. We are so scared to preach on sin anymore. We're so scared that we're going to offend somebody. And I'm going to tell you, I think we need to be offended. I think we need to learn in our own life that I am a sinner. That I need Jesus. I need Christ. And we need to take those things to the right, uh, to the right people. And surround ourselves with good godly men and good godly women who are going to lead us to the gospel of Christ. Today, if you're looking for some good advice, I'm going to give you a, a hint on how to judge good advice. The best advice is always going to lead you back into the gospel. They're always going to lead you back into the word of God. If they're trying to lead you away from the word of God, there's a problem. They're going to lead you back into the Word of God and show us the solution. That's the grace and the mercy that God has for our life. You may have good friends, and that is important. Friends that care about you, love you, are a necessary part of growth. But there's one friend that sticks closer than a brother, and only one that saves Jesus came to reverse the curse that started in the Garden of Eden and ended up in your life. King David said in Psalms 61 verse 2, From the end of the earth I will cry to you. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I am. Lead me to the rock. Lead me to Christ. That's what the church should be doing. Leading people and ourselves to the Christ. When you're in a fight, when you're in a struggle, wrestling with an issue, whether it's spiritual, financial, uh, emotional, or sexual, whether it's an addiction, or a bondage, or a habit, you need to go to someone that's higher than you. In other words, someone who has all that underneath their feet, someone who has defeated all the sins in our life, someone who has defeated the addictions, someone who has defeated, defeated all the problems, and somebody who has defeated the curse of man upon the cross, and that person is Jesus Christ. We need Jesus. We need Christ. It's time to tell your friends to take it to the rock. Tell somebody, today, I go to the rock. I need Jesus in my life because if I take a good look at my life, I can realize what kind of person I really am. And I am a sinner with a problem. And I have to have Jesus. They said to the prophet Elisha, this place is pretty. We like the neighborhood. It's set in a nice place. We like the view from all outward appearances. The city we live in is a good place. But the water is bad. The water is cursed. It carries some kind of poison in it and is making the ground barren. In other words, it's killing our future. It's killing our future. The problems and the curse is destroying us. If we're not going to take it to Jesus, it's going to kill us and destroy us. The enemy is here to kill, steal, and destroy. He's not here to offer you a party. He's not here to give you a good time. He may lie about all those things, but he wants to kill you. And he wants to kill your future. There's an attack on our children. There's an attack on our marriages. 
There is an attack on the future in this country. And it's time we take it to the cross because that's the only place that's going to reverse the curse in our life. Thank God for the men in 2 Kings chapter 2. Thank God for these men who wanted something more than pretty. They wanted purity and they wanted the power of God. They were more concerned about being good than just looking good. Listen to the words. It carries on to the modern day church. Some of God's people today that uh, have let something into your heart that has poisoned you. Maybe it's anger. Jealousy. Oh, pride. Oh, that sin of pride. I have seen so many men and women fall to that sin of pride. It becomes a, a poison. And it's time we admit that our life stream is poisoned. And we need to revisit. We need a true revival. Proverbs 4.23 says, Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it springs the issues of life. Keep your heart with all diligence. We have to be on guard. The enemy is out there roaming the internet, roaming uh, the, the books, even at a Christian store. You can go and find some books that smell like smoke straight from the pit. The, uh, we, we find the enemy just prowling around like a warring lion, seeking who he may devour. We see all these things happening, even in our own churches. We have become unproductive. Life has become barren. We have seen people with no joy, no peace, and no passion for life. They are full of bitterness, anger, and resentment, and unforgiveness. They let envy and jealousy and strife creep into their heart. And now, even when something good does happen, or something good is initiated, it ends up drying up because the stream is poison. Until you get that out of your heart, life is going to be barren. No fruit. I think that's why we don't see the fruit as much as we used to. We are so consumed with sin that fruit is dying on the branches. I want to get to the blessings. But first we have to deal with the curse. We have to deal with the curse. And the biggest problem that I see is we blame everyone else. We blame our government. We blame our, our, our Congress. We blame, the, uh, uh, we blame the neighbors. We blame the pastors. We blame everyone else. Instead of looking at the true curse, the true source of the problem, it's in us. Our heart needs to change. And the only way it's going to change is through the power and the grace of Jesus Christ. Remember, He is not here to make your old life better. He wants to give us a new one. We are so busy with this do-betterism, trying to make our old life meet around our own standards. When God has His own standards, and He showed that through His Son, Jesus Christ. I want to tell you, this: uh, your future is worth fighting for. These men in 2 Kings, they made a decision to fight for their future, to fight for their families, to fight for their marriages, to fight for their children, to fight for their church, to fight for their temple. And it's the same decision we need to make right now. Are you willing to fight for it? Oh, it's going to get ugly at times. We're going to offend a few people. I know we are. But it's time that we fight for it. I want to tell you the truth of the gospel. It doesn't take an act of Congress to change a man. It takes an act of God to change a man. And it's time that we stop blaming other people and take accountability for ourselves and fight for our future. To fight for our kids. One of the greatest uh, uh, fears that the devil has is that mighty seed of the divine DNA that lives inside of you is going to grow, it's going to sprout, and you're going to become a mighty person. 
You're going to become a mighty man or a mighty woman for God. That's the greatest fear that the devil has, and he'll fight you tooth and nail so that never happens. And it's time for us to accept Christ and through the power of the Holy Spirit, fight back. It's your family we're fighting for. Fight for them. Are your children and your grandchildren worth fighting for? Fight for them. Is your church worth fighting for? Then fight for it. Don't leave it up to one person or next. I, I see that so many times as a pastor. Too many people leave it up to the ministers to do all the fighting. And I'm telling you, we need your help. We need you. We're an army led by the great general Jesus Christ who led uh, up the cross of Calvary and died for our sins. And through uh, his sacrifice, we have eternal life for those who surrender their life to Christ. It's time for the church to fight back and stop letting sin run this world. The, many, the men of the city of our verses today said, this is not right. It's not right that our water is poisoned. It's not right that our ground is barren. We do not accept it. It is not normal. We are not just satisfied for the pretty. We're not going to watch our destiny be stripped from us. They decided their future was worth fighting for. Ask yourselves, do I believe that my future is worth fighting for? God did, and he sent his son, Jesus, to die for you, to reverse the curse, to bring us back to fellowship with him. You were worth fighting for. Now it's time for us to fight. Come on, somebody. I'm trying to tell you, if you want it, you're going to have to fight for it. The devil ain't going to sit back and watch you waltz into your destiny without a fight. There are so many reasons that believers today have lost their fight, lost their fire, lost their passion. They've settled down. They're satisfied. Just know they're saved and not going to hell. They don't care about anyone or anything else. When Jesus was at the Last Supper, he said, This is my blood. Take it and drink it all. Too many people are satisfied with just a sip. With just the knowledge to know that they're going to heaven. What about the next person? What about your children? What about their children? What about the future of the church? Christianity is always just one generation away from going extinct. And it's time that we recognize there's an issue. That there's a problem. And make a choice. Tell someone today that I choose change. I choose the real change and the change that only comes from Jesus Christ. To reverse the curse, it must become a source of grief to you. As long as I am willing to put up with the things in your life, as long as you are willing to put up with what's happening, you will always have it. It's time for us to look at it and say no more. I'm telling you, I, have been a, uh, I was an IV drug addict for 16 years. I spent a decade in prison. And every time I look at the liquor aisle, I get disgusted because I am willing to fight it. And it's time for the rest of the church to step up and say there's sin going on. And we're not going to put up with it anymore. God came to reverse the curse, not for us to sit back and just let it happen. In Psalms 97.10, you who love the Lord hate evil. He preserves the souls of his saint. He delivers them out of the hands of the wicked. We must embrace God's word as the final authority. The prophet represented the word of God. The prophet Elijah in 2 Kings. The word of God is uh, the word of his blessing and the healing by his hands. The curse was very real. You may have been laboring under the curse your entire life. You have been maybe seeking to make this old life better. 
All you're trying to do is make that old curse pretty. There are all kinds of curses, but there's one. The curse of sin that entered into man. And now we have the curse of sickness and disease. The curse of poverty and lack. And no matter how hard you work at it, no matter how much you try to make it look pretty, you're still under it. But there is one. There is one who came to reverse the curse. God sent his son to reverse that poison water, that poison stream. We got to stop looking to make everything pretty. It's time we look at the problem and say, let the cure start here with me. We accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior. We got to stop looking for the blessings and looking for the blesser. That's Christ. See, when the salt came in contact with the cursed water, the curse had to go. Elijah told him to get a new bowl, a brand new creation, something completely different. Fill it full of salt, fill it full of word of God, and throw it into the water. We have to do the same. You are the salt of the world. It's you that God has chosen. And it's you. Let the revival start now in your heart. What the devil meant for evil, God is making work for good. It's time you turn to somebody and say, I want a new life. I want something completely different. I don't want to keep trying to make this old life pretty. See, there's a curse that lives inside of us. And Jesus came to give me a new life and reverse the curse. It's time for that bitter water to go. It's time for that bitter life to say goodbye. God wants to set you free, and he did it through his son, Jesus. So let's pray. Dear Gracious Father, Lord God, as we reach out for this TV, Lord God, as we reach out into this community that WTJR touches, as we reach out for the message, Lord God, let your spirit reach into us. Lord God, let us stop trying to make everything pretty. Let us admit to the curse in our life and let us accept the one who reverses the curse, who changes life. That is Jesus Christ. Accept him today and enjoy the new life. Praise God. And sweet is the way.